Hi there, I hope you're ready for some fun in the sun today. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning and this is what it's like. It's gorgeous, but I'm still in the hoodie, so me. Right, today's session is going to be relatively intense, so we're going to start off with some light rowing to make sure that you don't go into it cold, okay? And I'll explain what the session is while we're doing that light rowing. So we have to set up our machine first. Now, in a concept two, that means setting your drag factor to where you want it to be. Now, if you don't know about drag factor, just set it between three and six for the time being, and that's a safe place to set it. You don't want to set it up at 10, because that could be too tough and you have to heave against it but three and six is relatively safe and then you might want to check out the video i have about drag factor on youtube if you want to know more about it if you're on a non-concept two machine though please just follow that guide where you want to set enough of a kind of a feel that you can feel the weight of the stroke but not so heavy that you have to heave against it all right next up set your monitor to eye height if you can i know not all machines let you do that but on a concept two hopefully you can set it at eye height and finally if you can set the foot stretcher height on your machine then please set it to a point where you're able to get to the front of the stroke with your shins pointing vertically comfortably okay um, if you're set too high you might not be able to get there quite without getting all bound up and uncomfortable if you're set too low you might scoot straight past which is going to cause power leaks and possible hyperextension of your back so we're just going to do some light rowing for while well, I explain so don't worry about pace or anything just get yourself comfortable and just get your heart rate up and your breathing rate up okay now it's so sunny I'm sticking sunglasses on I don't want to be rude but um, here we go okay so in three two one let's go so, just light rowing at a relatively slow stroke rate. All I want you to do is think about pushing your feet, okay? So push your feet into the machine and then you should get a sensation of power coming from your legs. Kind of like doing a squat. You're not thinking about pushing too hard. Really just think about if you're doing a squat with a very light weight or even no weights. You just push, and then if you can think about the timing of as you push with your feet, that's when your hands connect the handle to the machine. And that's how you get the power into the machine. So you're not pulling from the front. You may have always thought of rowing as something that was, you were pulling on an oar. But actually what you're doing is pushing with your feet and for the majority of the stroke you are just transferring that power from your legs through your body into the handle and into the machine. And so when you see people talk about rowing being like a all over body workout in order to use your legs and therefore all your body and not just your arms that's why you push with your legs rather than pull with your arms you always have to finish with a pull okay so that was just a quick Technique tip, just as you get warmed up. Today's session then is just going to be 15 minutes. And how we're going to do it is we're going to do one minute fast and intense, and then 30 seconds rest. We're just going to keep on doing that until our 15 minutes is up. So actually, we'll only be doing 14 and a half minutes. You're just doing 10 intense one minute rows with nine rest periods in between. Of course, you can extend that last one minute to the full minute and a half if you wish. I may do that. But let's see how we feel. So, we'll just keep on going for another 45 seconds or so. Make this a four minute warm up. Hopefully, your heart rate's up a little bit. Your breathing rate is up a little bit. 
but more importantly your body feels eased off and ready for some slightly faster rowing if it's not then pause this and continue to warm up until you're ready so I don't want you to get injured last stroke here there we go so I'm going to program in 15 minutes I'm not going to bother setting this as one minute with 30 seconds rest or anything I'm just going to put 15 minutes into the monitor and then I'll just look at it at the end of a minute I'll stop for 30 seconds and then I'll pick back up and whatever if you want to pro program in a proper interval work it into your monitor please do it might help if you're the kind of person that likes to come back and look at how you got on in each minute but as been this row is aimed for people in the gym who don't really want to be rowers and I'm going to assume you're going to be the same as me you might even just do a just row and just start rowing not even bother about program programming your monitor go mad <laughs> right make sure to have a drink as even though the temperature says it's only four degrees today that sun's really hot <laughs> so deceptive okay so we're going to start off at a high stroke rate probably around about 28 and we're going to put power in from our legs in order to get up to that stroke rate okay so you push harder with the legs that'll make your drive speed speed faster and then you recover nice and quickly and smoothly as well and that'll get your stroke rate up and that'll kind of cause the intensity of these sessions and then you can push harder or softer as you wish once you get up to your stroke rate it's up to you but this is meant to be quite a an intense session okay here we go then in three two one let's go so like i say you push nice and hard with those legs and they cause your drive speed which is whoosh the first half of the stroke as you put in the power if you push hard enough with your legs they'll be fast enough to get your stroke rate up but in order to really keep it up you have to make sure and match it rhythmically by a slightly faster return to however the drive should still be faster than your recovery you obviously want to recover for longer than you work okay let's take two more one more that's our first minute done okay so you should feel certainly that was harder than the light rowing did for the warm-up you shouldn't feel worn out already now we've got 10 of these to do so don't what they call fly and die where you just go rattling up and down so quick that one minute in you're on the floor okay next one's coming up five four three two one go so although this is only 10 minutes worth of work as long as you keep the intensity of the row up there this 10 minutes should be more than enough to give you a good old workout whether you are just someone using the rowing machine for a bit of a distraction when it comes to cardio or whether you're someone looking to get better as a rower this is a perfect workout because you can just change the intensity of how much power you're putting in through these one minute sections last stroke you should be feeling it from your quads maybe your hip flexors if you're doing this right if you're only feeling it in your arms you're not getting that push right from your legs so remember 
push with the feet, try and connect your handle to the machine at the same time. That's how the power gets in. Five, four, three, two, one, go. I do hope that this workout ends up being over before you realize it. I sometimes hear from people saying, oh, rowing, it's dead boring. But it's sessions like this that should really disprove that where you should be going intense enough that you have no capacity to be bored. You have no time or brain space to feel bored because you're working so hard and concentrating on keeping that intensity right up there. Two more. One more. And rest for 30. So it doesn't matter whether you're interested in being a rower or not. You still want to get the benefits out of while you're sitting on this rowing machine. Which makes sense that you want to row in a way that your body gets the most out of it. And you enjoy it. Which is hopefully what I'm about. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're off. <clears throat> now, I'll talk technique for a couple of these, just in case you want to know a little bit more. And the first thing to say is that as you are at the front of the machine, ready to take the stroke, I want you to think about keeping those arms straight and a forwards lean or tilt over your hips so that you are leaning into the front of the machine with straight arms and that is how the power effectively transfers from your feet into your arms and into the handle two more one more so you're in the front straight arms you push with the legs keep that forward lean arm straight till your legs are around about halfway then you swing over your back and pull in your arms Ooh, it's quite warm for a hoodie wasn't expecting this okay five four three two one go <clears throat> And as much as I did say that this isn't about pulling on the oar or the handle, you do want to still make sure to have a solid finish of the stroke. So get that handle into kind of a sternum height, elbows through your sides in order to keep your wrists flat. So if you notice you are bending up or bending down with your wrists, you're not quite getting the arm and back workout that you should be. One more stroke. So if you come in, wrist flat, your delts, your biceps, your forearms get, and your lats get a nice workout. If you tuck in with your wrists, you suddenly lose it all. And all that gets worked is here, as opposed to here. <laughs> okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. It's really easy to get lost in technique. In fact, my main, or well, this is a main row, but 
my usual, let's say, row along workouts that are aimed at rowers, I do spend quite a lot of my time talking about technique. Partly, must be said. So it gives me something to talk about. But also because a good technique helps you row safely, efficiently, and enjoy it more. Three, two, one. Because if you're rowing in a way that you're getting injured or sore by doing it, you're not going to come back. I mean, I wouldn't come back if I was rowing. Every time I came off, I had sore backside or sore shoulders or whatever. I'd be like, I'm going to stick to the cross trainer. But good technique helps you from that point of view. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And I know you may be thinking, I don't care. I don't want to be a rower. I don't care about my performance, but you should hopefully want to care about longevity. And even if you don't really mind if injury keeps you off the rowing machine, if you tweak your lower back because you are only pulling with your arms instead of pushing with your legs, that may keep you off doing anything else for a couple of weeks while you heal. Okay, three, two, one. Like, maybe you row in a CrossFit box and that's kind of why you're looking to do a bit more rowing. Think about the time they spend teaching you how to do kips and muscle ups and deadlifts and squats so you don't injure yourself. It's kind of the point of what I try to do when I talk technique. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Especially when you look at it, that starting point of the stroke is very much like a deadlift. Once you get to the backswing, you suddenly you've moved all your angles, so it's not identical. But this point with knees bent, arms straight, and driving with your legs is similar enough that hopefully you can correlate the importance of technique when it comes to rowing and a deadlift. One more. Okay, how many have we got? Three and a half minutes. I can't do the maths. Two. Two if we finish with a minute and a half on the last one. I'll find out. I'm going to have a quick drink. Oh. Okay, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. And that's a good thing about a row like this one with these little 30 second rests is that if you need to have a drink or a wiggle of your backside to get comfortable, the space to do that because the drinking thing is exceptionally important there's no bigger enemy to cardio than dehydration after all okay closing in on the end of this one 
keep that intensity and stroke rate up. Three, two, one. Okay. Now I'm gonna finish with a minute and a half, okay? Just to see out the complete 15 minutes. You don't have to. You could take a 45 second rest here, then do a minute 15, or whatever, however the maths work out. 15 seconds, how you get what I mean? Yeah, it's up to you. Four, three, two, one, go. But, as being this is my cardio workout for the day, I want to make sure I step off the machine happy that I've done my session and I'm not going to be going to bed in 12, 13 hours time still energised and thinking, hmm, I wish I'd done more. I mean, I am going to squeeze in a weight session and a stretching session too. So this is just a short cardio burst to make sure I'm all topped up in terms of my rowing muscles and also cardio. But it's not meant to absolutely floor me because I want to make sure I have energy to do a little bit more on the floor. Last stroke coming up. Good job. And that's it. We're done for the main session. Now, if you want, you can go onto your next machine. Go have some, like I say, go for a run or cross train or bike, or just to cool down, I'm gonna do some rowing drills. Two minutes worth, 30 seconds each. So, and this'll help you cool down, ready for your next station, okay? We're gonna start off by rowing with only one leg. So put one foot in the straps, one whoop, on the ground, and that's it. And you're rowing exactly the same technique, just with one leg in. Slow stroke great again, so follow me. In three, two, one, go. So all you're thinking about here is push with that leg that's strapped in. So push. And because you've only got one leg strapped in, it's easier to concentrate on it. And you're not worrying about pace, you're not worrying about stroke rate, you're just worrying about push. Let's take two more of these. One more. Swap feet. Then continue with the other one. And you will find, hopefully by having only one leg in, that you have an improved flexibility coming into the front so that forward tilt over your hips in order to get that lean into the front of the machine should be easier with only one leg in. Okay, let's put both feet in, get your legs straight, and then use your back and arms. So you lean forwards, swing with your back, pull in your arms. Swing, pull. Swing, pull. And then out, swing. So you're basically going back, arms, arms, back. Back, arms, arms, back. Okay, let's roll to the front of the machine with that forward tilt straight arms. Hold it and just push out with your feet. Don't worry about power here. Soft is okay as long as you're holding this forward tilt and straight arms. So you can get used to this position for the main 
drive power of your stroke. Let's do two more. I know we're at zero, but we're all done. And that's it. That is our session done for today. So we've done four minute warm up, 15 minute main session, two minute cool down. So you can log in your diary that today you did 21 minutes worth of rowing. We won't tell anyone about the 30 second rests. Don't worry. And hopefully that will then set you up nicely to go into the next station. Now, if you're done done, I suggest uh, going and do some stretching. I usually pop up a stretching video in the top left hand corner, but this is gonna be a short outro, so he's not gonna be there. So I recommend doing hamstrings, quads, hip flexors, uh, certainly shoulders and forearms if you can. Forearms, that's a good one for it. Just pray and push your hands together. It really gets your forearms. Uh, yeah, or you can, you know how to stretch, I hope. Or you have various ways that you stretch your own body. So go do something just to make sure and stretch off. I have very, very tight hip flexors. Um, and so I need to stretch them quite often. My hamstrings are tight as well. Maybe, they, maybe there's something linked there. Anyway, there we go. So that was our 15 minute, nice intense row that shouldn't have felt too bad. You shouldn't have felt bored during it, hopefully. And hopefully you'd, you'd had a little bit of a think about, maybe I do want to think about how I put the power into the machine and really push with my legs. Because you will get a workout if you're just pulling with your arms. But like I say, rowing is a kind of 85, 95% all over body workout when done right. If you're only using your arms, you're like 30%. So that's kind of the, the maths there. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. Remember, I do have other rows within the rowing for gym users or rowing for non-rowers playlist. I've also got the beginners playlist up here on YouTube as well that takes you through a whole bunch of rows that you may want to look at if you uh, just want to build up your rowing time a bit more. Um, and then if you do actually fall in love with rowing, remember I do have a bunch of plans, loads of standalone sessions and workouts and series and things that you may want to look at um, and just enjoy rowing because it's amazing. It does so much for your body. Um, and yeah, you could really just get away with doing this all the time. I do some side to side movements from time, time to time, but uh, yeah, and you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. So thank you so much for watching this one. Please leave me some kind of a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed it or not. Um, and until or when I see you in another, in another video. I uh, hope you look after yourself, stay safe, be well, take care, bye bye.